the whole time in prison, I was evolving into the the life coach, the teacher, the wisdom maker that I am today on the streets. And the, the person that has given his life to this path and this purpose of creating the individual you admire so that you can just give him to the world. And that's what I tell everybody their life's purpose is. Your life's purpose and mine is to create that individual that you unbiasedly admire in every fucking way and give that motherfucker to the world. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, Mike Rasheed. This is the Lions, Owls, and Elephants podcast. I have a very special guest. I'm very excited to have a conversation with this brother. Um, he's very motivational. He has a very similar mindset that I have in terms of stress being our best friend. We're going to get into that, but I want to introduce to y'all, Wes Watson. What's up, Big Mike? How you doing, Big Dog? Yeah, hey, I'm, thanks I'm for having good. us up here. Thanks for coming, bro. For I sure. mean, I love it. You're right up the street from me. I'm from Dago, SD, mm -hmm. San Diego, and coming up here to OC, sliding up here in the Cullinan to meet Stop. up with Big Mike. It was a fucking fun trip already. Yeah, my parking lot looking real, real legit this we're, morning. We're looking good. Uh, we're looking good. We like that. We like the same shit. Listen, man, let's let's dive right into it so the people know who you are, what you're about. Um, I came across your content on YouTube. I'm like, I fuck with this guy. I like, I really like, I'm drawn to people who's been through things in life, right? Because if you go through things in life and you thrive, not just survive, but thrive, and it's behind you, you're sturdy, you're solid. I have more trust in people like that, right? So uh, give us a little bit of a backstory um, on why you went to the joint, how long, and what you learned from it. Well, first off, Wes Watson, GP Penitentiary Life YouTube channel, and this is where I started everything, sharing my story about 10 years of incarceration. And I like what you said is I don't trust a man who had, hasn't had this behind him because I don't trust a man without a dark side. Mm -hmm. I need to know that a motherfucker's been through it, he's tested, and he's true. But my or, everything started with me in the penitentiary and just changing my life. I was the worst. I went in, before I went in the penitentiary, I was a millionaire. Mm -hmm. I used to push a lot of fucking weight. I ended up going to the pen for a robbery, assault, deadly weapon, um, great bodily injury, the whole nine. It was a drug deal went bad, a mm -hmm. big ass weed deal when weed wasn't fucking legal. By the time I fucking Another get out, by the time, time I fucking get out, weed's all yeah. legal. Right. When I was even busted, cops would be like, we'd be smoking uh, joints in the pen and shit. I don't smoke, I don't do nothing no more. I don't right. touch nothing. Right. But um. Uh, they would be, they would be like, fuck, they, is that weed? I smell weed. I said, weed's legal, motherfucker. And I just keep pushing down the tier, smoking a joint. Right, right. But we were, we were just off the hook in prison. But before prison, skater, surfer, snowboarder, dude from Oceanside, California, which is North County, San Diego, and we just wanted to smoke for free. Yeah. So we just started pushing that weight. Fucking ounces turned into pounds, turned into big ass packs. Fucking uh, Chevy trucks turned into Range Rovers, mm -hmm. and this is when we got going. Right. Now, years later, packs were getting fronted. People weren't paying back. Mm -hmm. A motherfucker got his head taken off, and it landed me in the penitentiary for 10 years. Right. Now, the transition from the streets to the pen, I realized the bitch I was. Mm -hmm. People out here are soft. They're mm -hmm. fucking, they're not, they're not ready to face. What, 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 what about that transition that made you feel like that? I just knew I was a whiny ass bitch. I, I ate whatever I wanted. I fucking, I slept it. I did everything I wanted when I wanted. Mm -hmm. And in, in California prison, there's politics. You're getting up when the fuck we tell you. Mm -hmm. You're working out every fucking day. Mm -hmm. It's militant 24 seven. Yeah. So I went from that San Diego drug dealer, bottle popping, weed smoking, eating whatever I want lifestyle to the militant Cali prison life. And I'm like, fuck, I'm, this is this is a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. But since I'm one of those people who will step up to any test, from then, right when I got busted, I said I'm gonna be the best at this fucking prison shit. Right. So when you when you got to the pen and you realized, damn, I gotta be disciplined now, 
was that a hard transition or did you have any component of discipline before you went in? Well, see, I grew up on the Arnold Encyclopedia bodybuilding. So I was, yeah. I was already bodybuilding, but I was one of them half-assed bodybuilders. No mm -hmm. diet, mm -hmm. hitting weights just to get big. Right. You know, that, that fat buff shit where yeah. you just think you're buff, but you're hitting weights whenever you, you want, doing whatever you want. Top. Yeah, just you tank top, off. motherfucker. Yeah. Not, pu not fully peeling out. Right. But, um, yeah, I just the, the transition wasn't difficult because I always had a professional mindset. Mm -hmm. I was always committed to everything I did. I was actually a pro snowboarder growing up. Mm -hmm. So I was always committed to what I was – once I made my mind up, and prison made me make my mind up real fucking quick. When you roll into the block, they're going to tell you. You're going to hand them your paperwork. They're going to check what you're there for, and they're going to tell you, listen – like anything I ask you, the answer is yes, or it's happening to you. Mm -hmm. This is a motherfucking dictatorship. It's not a democracy. Mm -hmm. And so you have to follow suit. There's a threat of violence. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, once my mind was made up that I was going to be, I I'm getting jacked and I'm right. getting blasted and I'm going to be that prison motherfucker. Right. Like I was already committed to that mindset, that visual, that vision that I had of myself at, at 220 doing 20 pull-ups a set with 20 inch arms that was my first vision when i hit the block right. and i'm like that has to be done now i had done that within the first two to three years and the crazy thing was is that was the manifestation of my vision i brought that into fruition and most people that's the first thing they manifest in life that's the first thing they do is their body they're like i want to look a certain way i'm going to change that and once i did that i moved on to like quotes and reading reading and just developing this different heightened state of individual this conscious right. individual right. that was not just swole this dude understood deeper topics so i didn't know but the whole time in prison i was evolving into the the life coach the teacher the wisdom maker that i am today on the streets and the the person that has given his life to this path and this purpose of creating the individual you admire so that you can just give them to the world. And that's what I tell everybody their life's purpose is. Mm -hmm. Your life's purpose and mine is to create that individual that you unbiasedly admire in every fucking way mm -hmm. and give that motherfucker to the world. What about the wisdom side, the intellect side? Were you kind of tapped into to that uh, back then? No, I was superficial as fuck. I, okay. just wanted, I just wanted... I wanted the Range Rover on the 24s. I wanted to be jacked and I wanted shit my way. I just I just wanted everything. Well, what about what about the pen kind of shifted your mind into that that space? It was once I got rid of all vices. Once I dropped all vices and I started to really read these quotes and get deep into like the teachings that people the you know, the wisdom of the ages or what quotes are known as. And so once I read quotes, I started to see that infinite intelligence is real because people all across spans of time are saying the same shit and how could they say the same thing if there wasn't centralized intelligence so once i made up in my mind that centralized intelligence existed through reading quotes of people all through the ages saying the same shit and me being aligned at that time of my life where i was in a caloric deficit because prison has you starving like a motherfucker i was training intensely as fuck which was tapping me into my higher self basically a meditative state mm -hmm. and i spent a lot of time in isolation and solitude that made me meet myself at a different degree mm -hmm. so once i used those three systems of elevation i looked back and i realized since the dawn of time people have been using these to tap into self and speak to creation so they fasted to meet themselves and, and meet their creator or go within and meet themselves. And then they, they went on long enduring treks. You know, this is how they prove their value. They trek from one city to another to then just fall at the altar on their knees, which I believe prayer isn't, uh, isn't an assumed position. It's that you've actually given your all and fell to your fucking knees. People are just assuming that position and, and saying they're grateful and they're worthy, but they haven't sacrificed everything, every ounce of their being to get where they're going and then the um then they also sought solitude they would they would remove themselves from everything and they would spend time alone to tap into the stream of consciousness and the stream of consciousness is where i found everything and i found this uh in a in a pretty normal fashion i just picked up a book and the book was outwitting the devil by napoleon hill now that book told me that to tap into infinite intelligence one had to be grateful so gratitude kicked open the door to infinite intelligence to higher intelligence so me reading the quote books and seeing that for sure i know that there's a centralized universal message that we're all tapping into and then reading that so then i just knew that i had to be grateful
So every morning I made a grateful practice. I made I intentionally cultivated a grateful state and I've done that for 15 years straight by waking up at 245 as an offering to people. So everything I teach is self transcendence. So we wake up at 245 to become our best self for everybody else. We work out to raise our rate of vibration so that I can bring better energy to you. We create ourselves in this form, this offering to give to everybody around us. So before we even meet people, the energy exchange is congruent. We've been wanting to meet them. We've been preparing to meet them. We knew that we were put in a place to be valuable to them. So everything in my program that I teach and everything in my program that I live was about transcending self. A lot of the things that you're speaking on, I've been tapped into for some time, right? Tapped in is a word. I love that shit. Fuck. I, I... I had a period where I was facing 15 to 20 years, right? So, and I was a fugitive for seven years, right? So every day I got this dark cloud over my head as a fugitive and I had so many decisions to make. So in my mind, what they wanted to put me away for, it was not fair to me, right? And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not allowing that. There were other things that I had done that I never got in trouble for, I'm like, well, maybe I'll get some time, right? But before all of that, I had a contingency plan on what happens if I get sent up, right? And I think, I don't know if uh, Malcolm X up there, but I said, if I went to the pen, I'm, I'm gonna become Malcolm X. I'm gonna become as wise as, I'm gonna be a problem in a good way, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, but I was already like, my favorite, one of my favorite books is, is called Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu, right? And I've been on that since like high school. You know, um, the power of the subconscious mind, you know, mind magic, all of these different things about the subconscious and it's uh, and how it can control the conscious and vice versa. Right. And how th those things, br those things bring magic to your world, to your life. You can create anything. So it's fascinating to me that you picked up on that in prison because I, th I now now I'll tell you this, too, um, before I went on the run. I got picked up on something else, something stupid. So I was like, "Yo, fuck this! This is this can't happen because most likely they're gonna rem they're gonna uh, take away my bond, and I'm gonna have to sit there and fight my case from jail. That means I ain't gonna see my kids, like all of that shit, right?" And I was like, "Fuck!" So up to this point, I've been arrested many times, but in and out, I bond out and I'm good, right? This time, I'm getting all the way through the process, and I, I, I bond out that day, and the judge was like, "Well, you could post bond, but..." I mean, it's Sunday. I don't know if the pro when the prosecutor see this, they're gonna, you know, whatever. Cause I was on felony release, so I'm like, I'll, I'm gonna post anyway. Whatever, we'll see what happens. So time was going on. I wasn't getting let out. I'm like, fuck. So they dressed me out. I'm about to get housed. And the dude in the cell with me was cool, right? Nice guy, real positive, all of this shit. But a flip switch, and I'm like, yo, stop talking to me. You know what I'm saying? Cause I'm thinking I'm about to go. And in my head, I was like, it makes no sense, but. I was gonna knock everybody out. Anybody I, I encountered, I'm just gonna knock out for no reason. Because I had that much frustration and anger and fear and disbelief, you know what I'm saying? It was like I was going to a psychotic space, right? And I've had a re very violent past, you know what I'm saying? But I've had a foundation of like ethics and wisdom and 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 being a practical, rational I mean, that person. fits well with Jordan Peterson. I mean, you have to be an oh, absolute yeah. oh, monster, but oh, willingly yeah. control that. Like one of the things I tell young men, well, and young women as well, but the young men really need to hear this more, I think, is that you should be a monster. You know, because everyone says, well, you should be harmless, virtuous. You shouldn't do anyone any harm. You should sheath your competitive instinct. You shouldn't try to win. You know, you, you don't want to be too aggressive. You don't want to be too assertive. You want to take a back seat and all of that. It's like, no wrong you should be a monster an absolute monster and then you should learn how to control it do you know the expression it's better to be a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war right right exactly those are the actual men in my eyes mm -hmm. who are capable of extreme violence mm -hmm. but willingly forego it i always right. say i always say violent by design courteous by choice you know but then i couldn't control it you know what i'm saying and bro they called my name i don't know maybe five minutes before they was gonna throw me in into the wolf with the wolves and I was so fortunate, but you, you flipped a switch in the joint. If I would have went in at that time, and this was 2008 as well, 
I would not have flipped the switch. I would have reverted to an animalistic type of barbarian type of behavior. And I'm glad it didn't happen, you know what I'm saying? But that scares me, you know what I'm saying? But it also fascinates me that you didn't go that route. Oh no, it fully happened to me at the start. Later okay. on, I started to evolve, but when I first fell, it was on a four yard, and level four yards are just beast mode. Yeah. But um, gladiator school. I raised my hand right off the bat, mm -hmm. and I'm like, anything. Let me fucking put my hand up for anything. Yeah. But when you're bigger, they're just like, no, we need you around for the fucking for the the riot, the yeah. race riot. I need you around for that shit. So, you know, most of the time. I wouldn't have to really put in the work that the dope fiends would have to put in. Mm -hmm. So then like the first couple times I had to put in some work, it would just be small shit DPs and shit like that, where you get 90 days in the, in the hole and shit. But then later on down the line, um, it, it was about some dips. Like me and me and another homeboy, like they do would disrespect me in the day room about some dips. I said, Let, let's fucking, let's go handle this shit, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we ended up in the cell. I fucking sliced him behind, from his lip behind his ear. And um, I ended up getting a 14-month shoe term, which was isolation. A 14-month shoe term, an A1, uh, A1-115, which is the highest write-up. That's murder, attempted murder, and assault deadly weapon. And that was about to be my last strike. And I sat there in the shoe and was like, just fuck man i just ruined my whole life mm -hmm. i ruined my whole fucking life right now and then uh at that time there was a riot so there was like 120 attempted murder cases being handed out across the prison so they didn't pick up my case for a, another strike they right. just they just uh they they gave it as like a normal fucking uh, battery yeah. and i didn't get a strike so then i i got love on that i made it back to the line from the shoe and when I came back to the line from the shoe, I was still sharking on everybody because mm. I was like, you guys are fucking weak. You guys are bitches. What are you guys doing? Yeah. And, like, I even came back, and, and like, we were sitting down at the table to smoke a joint right in the day room. I like, shave all the fucking paint off the table. Mm. I get the, bat the fucking batteries. I put them on the fucking steel table. I have the razor blades on top of the batteries. I'm puffing the joint, and the cop starts walking, and all these motherfuckers get up and start walking away. I'm like, oh, you fuckers are bitches. You know, I just, mm. I'm just pulling on this joint. Right. And this was, like, one of the last... This is one of the last times before I finally quit all substances, and I feel that was my greatest source of clarity because I've always been a fucking dope fiend, alcoholic, fucking always looking for a way out. Mm. And that's what I really feel changes people is when you're present for your pain. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're, not, if you're not present during the pain, you're not going to fucking grow. So at this point, it was when just time and time again, I kept running back to vices, realizing it didn't work, running back, realizing it didn't work. And finally, I relapsed super hard around 2015. I drank some prison wine. Mm -hmm. This fool Mongo from Mata Via, some uh, gang in L.A. He made some prison wine, some Pruno. I took a couple of sips and I started doing that white, started doing some meth. And, and then I was about two weeks into a, a massive binge, you know. I dropped mm -hmm. like a big ass sack in the day room. Mm -hmm. And uh, my bunkie went and I, I was fronting on everybody about it because I was high as shit. Right. I'm like, what's up? Where's my fucking shit, you know. Yeah. And you can't do that to other races in Cali yeah. prison. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my bunkie goes and tells the dude who has a yard, this fool Dutch, he goes and tells him, uh, hey, this fool West dropped a sack, and, like, mm -hmm. he's tripping on everyone over there. And Dutch is like, so what the fuck? What you telling on your bunkie for? Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Like, he's like, the guy was new as fuck. He didn't realize he's telling on me to, to another white boy. Right. And he's like, fuck you telling on him for? He's like, guess what? I dropped a big ass sack too. And that motherfucker gave it to me, bitch. Mm -hmm. He's like, get the fuck out of here. And Dutch calls me over there. I'm like, what's up, dog? He's like, your bunkie's over here snitching on you. He's like, go handle business. Mm -hmm. So I went back and I beat the fucking dog shit out of him. Mm -hmm. So I just beat Why the- he was on meth. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. beat the bark yeah. off my bunkie. Like fucking just- throwing him through the fucking bathroom stalls, mm -hmm. bust his whole face and everything. And I did it too close to OG Bone from uh, Rolling rolling 60s mm -hmm. in uh, L.A. Mm -hmm. And he'd been down like 28 years. It was too close to another race. And he didn't really care. Daryl fucking Samson, he's a good motherfucker. He's my boy. He's like seven foot. Been down for 28 years. Just mm -hmm. an OG fucking crip from L.A. Mm -hmm. And um, But my people said I was too close to another race when I beat his ass. And then I had to get DP'd by my own people. So two of my own people had to fuck me up. I swore I was going to fuck them up. So I go into it. I'm like, we pull all the shit apart. I'm like, I'm going to fuck you guys up. I had beat both their asses one-on-one -on -one before. Right. So then I come up, and I'm about to fight them. And uh, one dude jumps down, grabs my fucking legs. Mm -hmm. And the other dude comes up top and bombs on me. And they beat the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. It bruised my ego. I fucking had to come down off the meth with a busted-up face, mm -hmm. sit on my rack like a bitch. 
And I'm like, I'm never feeling this way again. Mm -hmm. So I quit all substances that day. I went deep into the reading. I was reading like Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. I was reading like Napoleon Hill, Outwitting the Devil. I was reading like 177 Mental Toughs of Secrets of the World Class by Siebold. And I was just immersing in these books and reading these quotes. And I had my workouts. And I just started putting together a solid program that was based on intentionally cultivating positivity within me so now i just didn't need the substances anymore and i always feel like people do it wrong people put it so much in their mind that they're trying to get rid of something that it actually draws them to it mm -hmm. i give you something so much more significance that the lesser drops off mm -hmm. so like aa and all that shit they think about it so much they place it in their mind so much yeah. that they're actually drawn to it mm -hmm. you're not even supposed to fucking do that you're supposed to have something so much more significant that the lesser drops off and the significance is you like you and your life creating the best you for the world, you being an offering for everyone you come across, that is what your purpose is. Right. So once I made myself and the man I was creating my purpose, now I had work to do all fucking day. I'm a big book, book nerd, right? I love science, I love anthropology, and I love military history. And one of the, um, I love warrior shit. I love the arts, like martial arts, boxing, you name it. And I, I got really into studying Bushido, like in Japan. The samurai always has to rise and move on because new challenges will come. Your mind is your best weapon. This is the unwritten samurai code known as the Bushido. It is the guide for the samurai in life, battle, and death. It was the unwritten code of principles and morals and taught the samurai self-control and the proper use of their sword. At this period of time, there were it was it was all caste systems out there, right? And the warriors were slaves, right? They were uh, but it wasn't looked at how we look at it modern day like slavery. It was uh, a servant, you know. And say you're a warrior, let's say I'm a fucking general somewhere or just a, a wealthy man, and I hire you, it's an honorable position, you know what I'm saying? Because you have a life's miss mission and that's to protect me, right? So, and I, and I used to think about it, I'm like, damn, I know I'm of that lineage, you know what I'm saying? Because um, I do feel that I am a servant, you know what I mean? That's the best way to be. Yeah. And first and, thing I say in the wake up mm, in the morning is how can I best serve everybody today? Correct, right. Fully transcending self, mm -hmm. not falling victim to your desires. Most people can't stick to shit because mm -hmm. they're so selfish. They're everything's about what they desire, what they want. Mm -hmm. And the only way to truly stick to something that builds you is to transcend self for a, a higher purpose, a greater purpose. Right. And that's living a life of service. So I was thinking about, damn. You know, I've figured out a way to articulate what's in my soul, right, to the world. But what about all the other people from that lineage? Because not everybody can be a warrior. Not everybody's born into that kind of lineage, right? Just like my mother a, was a nurse. And when I was a kid, I'd be with her when she's doing her shit. And I'm like, I could never do that, right? She's an angel. She Only certain people can do that, right? So, and that's just how it is. And I'm like, what about everybody else like me? I'm like, everybody else like me is in prison. You know what I'm saying? Because there's no outlet. There's no life is life is easy now. Yeah, the right a right of passage for men like there's us no, growing up. No, we go the wrong route. There's no heroic journeys. You know what I'm saying? So like you were saying earlier, how you know when they would make those long journeys to the next city or whatever, and they fall into supplication. Like I get, I fucks with that because I've I've lived I've had my heroic journey already. The hero's and, journey. And I and there's no saying there's no telling that I might not have another one. You know what I'm saying? And I, it's crazy because I recognize this at a young age that people go through these things. You know what I mean? Some people go through these things and like even if it was like like my father had a quadruple bypass. You know what I'm saying? And I learned so much from that that process, bro. Because the day we brought him home, quadruple bypass is if 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 homicide is a heart transplant, quadruple bypass is attempted murder. You know what I'm saying? It's that it's next right thing there, over, yeah, right? Yeah. So we seen him dead, like because they cracked his chest open, took his heart out, his body swole up with rigor mortis. You know what I'm saying? They just kept him his his heart his lungs breathing with a machine, sewed him back up. The day we brought him home, he's like, "Take me for a walk." I'm like, "You sure?" The doctors spoke against all of that shit, but we like, "Fuck it." 
but he couldn't walk from this wall to that wall without being like imagine running the hardest sprint you ever ran yeah so but every day we had to take him go a little further bro my pops recovered in a record time you adversity introduces a man to himself exactly, man. Exactly. so he he was a he, he had strong self-talk and he was in mm-hmm. the actions were backing it up that's why i tell people is during times of adversity through your self-talk and your actions you develop your strengths and weaknesses and everybody out here is so mentally weak they complain without suffering and the mentally strong they suffer without complaining right. so in the penitentiary when when the doors would slam when you were really tested, when everything was taken from you, that's where I introduced myself to who the fuck I needed to be. Mm-hmm. So I wait till the worst possible scenarios and then like really tested. And then I'm saying, this is who I am right here. Most people are gauging who they are when shit's going good. I gauge who I am when everything's so fucked and the bottom falls out and life is just at its fucking rock bottom. Who am I at that point? is the man that I have to create and that's the man I have to operate from because it's a biased measurement if you're like, hey, this is me on my best fucking day. Like, I don't even gauge that shit. Only when shit's fucked, that's the man who I am and that's why I never miss because most people miss because the day's a little off and they choose to fucking miss. The day's off, that's when I prove who the fuck I am, you know? Right. One of the best pieces of wisdom that, of seeds that my father planted me, in me was this. He said, son, we're people of character. He said, you don't develop character in good times. That's easy. 100%. Everybody's nice then. You do it when the chips are down. You lose your job. Your girlfriend leaves you. You get an accident, whatever. That's when you have to do the right thing. So for those, I want to I wanna like break this down a little bit better for those listening. So when you, let's say you lose your job and you got bills and this, that, and the third. The default for a lot of people is like, fuck it, I'm going I'm to hit a lick. I'm going to steal some shit. I'm going to do you want to do something, you want to revert to uh, something, a, a fast route, right, that has consequences potentially, right? You're not taking a hard route. You're taking the easy way out and nothing comes out of that. You know what I'm saying? So building that character is fuck it, staying down, right? Not being an asshole to people because you're in a bad mood because of you. Yeah, because people are every, so conditional. Yeah, and everything that we do, any adversity that we deal with is our fault. 100% is never... You can never blame anybody or anything on your shortcomings. It's always here, right? So, and when people really understand that, life will be so much easier. It's a there's a there's a quote that I love, and it's life is what you make it. Hundred percent. That's what yes. I like to I like to say. The world is not as it is. The world is as you are. Correct. So once we cultivate a certain internal state, now we can alter our perception in the lens we see the world at. I've sat in my penthouse so fucking miserable with millions in my bank account, every luxury car in great shape, but I couldn't see any of it because I was operating from a low frequency at that moment. Why were you in a low frequency? Then? I was at a low frequency out of just, it, there was shame and guilt attached to some of my behaviors. And it was, it, me, it's basically me being reactive. If I'm reactive to people and I, I really mean to, to inflict and put bad energy on them in that moment, cause I'm a fucking shark. I just know how to fucking like, I used to, I used to get off on like pulling that strap out and stick it in your fucking mouth, making you pee yourself in front of your chick and then sticking in her fucking face and telling everybody I'll fucking kill all you motherfuckers because they fucked with me. Like they would think I was some chump at a place where people are drinking and I'm like, oh, what's up, bitch? And just put the fear of God in everybody. That was like my greatest high was putting the fear of God in someone. But now I'm so in tune to karma and karmic debt that even if I sent you bad energy, it would hurt my soul because I'm so in tune to it. I remember one time I just even went in a, a tanning salon and the chick told me to put on a fucking mask. I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't even say anything to her. I didn't even say what the fuck. I just looked at her like, I looked at her like this and I sent her bad energy for about three hours later. I'm still thinking about it. And that was just proof that I was paying for sending that person bad energy. So I'm so in tune to karma and karmic debt that I make sure I want to, I make sure I always release what I want to possess. Mm -hmm. So I have all these teachings that I teach my people on my programs that have them navigate life and get clarity at a level they've never even thought possible so fucking quickly. It's instant. When you're talking about breakthroughs, something as simple as looking at a frequency chart and understanding why you're at a low frequency, why you're at a high frequency, and the actions, the thoughts, and the steps that get us to a high frequency from a low frequency. Mm -hmm. It's very simple to see that 
Your frequency is what you frequently see. And if the world around you is looking negative, it's because you're at a low frequency. How do we bring you up? I always tell people, don't even fucking worry about Mike. Don't even trip on Mike. Like, just say, am I at a low frequency or I'm at a high one? And if you're at a low one, quit expecting, uh, quit expecting a high outcome, high output from low frequency. Don't do it. Mm-hmm. Just get yourself back high and watch how problems turn into possibilities. And when you're low, you, all you see is problems. There's no way out. So what I did the whole time in prison was cultivate a positive mindset where all I saw was this vision I was constructing of me on the streets, super successful, healing people the same way I healed myself. Mm, my demons were anger and was emotion. Rageaholic, you know, yeah. Emotion and, and, and also my, my ego, like his levels to the ego, right? I've faced, <laughs> I've had the opportunity of dissolving my ego, but I'm like, nah, that's not the vibe. But I had to put it in check because... Well, the, the ego can be ethical. So ethical yeah, egoism sure. is awesome. My ego is good for a lot of people. Exactly. And I love that. Right. Fear, very few people, they're standoffish about the ego. I haven't told people the other day on a mm. podcast that if you don't post on social media, it's because you have a big ass ego. Mm. Like they're so worried about themselves. Mm. They won't even post some content that could save someone's life because of how they sound That's or so how they real. look. That's so real. It's fucking bullshit. Yeah. Like I can't believe, I used to be that way. And that's the only reason I know. Every teaching I have mm. that, I, that I share with people, it's the old me. It's something mm. about me. Right. And so that's why I love that you said that your ego is healthy for people. That's fucking, most people would just stay away from that word and think it's inherently evil or some shit. No, nah, I, I embrace it. There's a lot of words that we use, but the nomenclature has kind of changed the meaning. Yeah, the definition got but, flawed. Nah, I'm with what the word means, right? And I represent those meanings. And my ego is good. I, I, I embrace it. Now, I had a period when my ego was was ripe with yeah, the basis The basis of whether it would you know, be positive or negative ego-wise to me is intention. Right. What's your intention behind mm-hmm. what you're doing? And, and your lens, how you're viewing things, right? So I used to be the guy that, like, you had the audacity to X, Y, Z. The audacity, man. You know what I'm saying? And I had to pay back retribution because I'm like, yo, I don't give a fuck. Like, you really, you don't respect me? Like, yeah, you know let me saying? show I, you how I, little yeah, a fuck oh I give. You know? Right, right. So, but I found that that would always make me the bad guy, regardless of what these people did to me. You oh, know what yeah, saying? 100%. You're, you're not, we're not supposed to dish out punishment. Nah. And, and listen, bro, I'm sure we, I feel like we're torn from the same fabric, right? And if somebody jabbed me and I jabbed them back, it's way worse. Some people are, just happen to be more impactful than other people. Some people go walk in a room, you don't even notice they're in there. Exactly. Some other people, you feel their presence when they're there or when they leave. Got the chills right now. I happen <laughs> to be one of those people. So I, I, I had to really, I start, like, just like you, when I would put out that bad energy, physically, verbally, or whatever, yo, I would feel terrible. Even, I remember when I was in, like, I was like you're tw- meant for more. 21, right? And my roommate at the time, he's older than me. This cat, is some weird shit happened with, between him trying to holler at my girl at the time. I wasn't even accusing him. I was like, yo, let's not communicate with each other's women when we're not around. You know what I'm saying? I thought that was wise. And he, he felt the way because I knew what he did, right? But I wasn't even tripping. So he was trying to like lie and he's yelling at me like, you won't believe that bitch? And I'm like, yo, bro, chill, chill. I respect you because you're older than me, but just we good, stop. He wouldn't stop and a trigger went, I ah, socked him, right? Didn't knock him out, but he on the floor like this, like look, he's looking at me in terror, right? And I just walked out and left, bro. I felt so bad. I wanted to run my, and it was just a punch, but I wanted to run my car into the wall. Like I felt so terrible. I'm like, that's somebody's father. You know what I'm saying? That's somebody's son. Like, why did you do that to him? And every time I got into to any type of altercation, bro, I felt like shit. See, and, and one time, bro, the last time I got into an altercation, bro, I was out of line, bro. But I had to really check myself because I wanted to hurt him more. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to do more to him. I was calling this guy afterwards, like, yo, where the fuck you at now? I'm gonna come over there, whatever. Like, you know, you have that lust that that like a dog with his dick out when he's fucking attacking. Well, something. I mean, there's there's and so much to that low frequency desire. Yeah. And it's, it's like 
It, it is so destructive. Pe people could look at it from a religious standpoint or a scientific standpoint. So from a religious standpoint, high or low frequency, high frequency that we cultivate by being servants and giving and being the living example. That's like Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. You're walking, you're walking in the footsteps of greatness and you're being pulled to your purpose. You're being pulled to your destiny. Mm -hmm. But that low frequency shit, when we get all angry, we start desiring or we're taking substances and we're in that real shame level. That's grounds for like demonic possession to where that yeah. ain't even Mike at that That's point. Real, His eyes are dark circles That's and this real. motherfucker is possessed. Like we you know that wasn't you. We literally physiologically changed. Dude, that even you. You seen a drunk ass motherfucker who's in rage? You can't even, their, their eyes are black circles. They're straight possessed. Our our arteries restrict, right? Everything. Our our pupils dilate, right? Our nostrils flare, our teeth clench. You know what I'm saying? We literally change form. Fully. Have you seen um what's that movie when he has like multiple personality disorders and he's like a, a physical beast? And did he act like a woman and all of that shit? Now it's a lot of exaggeration, but it's it's what we're talking about. When this guy is angry, he's actually physically like more muscular and he's more of an animal or beast, you know what I'm saying? Like knowing how destructive we can be when we're in that low frequency, right? We're still powerful, it's about power and energy is not good or bad, it's how we manifest it, where we articulate that energy. So. I, I can't help but to think about how positive that is in a powerful way. When you think about, you ever heard the term historical strength? Uh, hysterical strength? No, no. All right, let's, this is a real uh, situation. Woman driving, baby in the back, car accident, her shit flips. Oh yeah, I always use this analogy. She gets out. <laughs> I didn't know the term. She's like, too, nah, but... fuck that. She pulls that car off of her, yeah, yeah, her yeah. child. Boom. I've experienced it. One time I'm in my garage, me and my son, he's probably like, Nine, nine or ten at the time, eleven. Uh, I got four fifty-five, whatever. Boom, something happened. I'm stuck. I'm like fuck. So I'm like, I'm gonna try to. I had clamps on it, right? I'm trying to roll it off of me because I can't just boom, boom, boom. As soon as it get to my stomach, that shit push all the way down because the stomach is soft, right? That's four hundred fifty-five pounds, bro. And I could feel shit wasn't right. I'm like fuck. I fucked up. Next thing I know, this kid lifts this fucking That's weight. That's crazy. This is my little skinny son, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. He lifts the shit off of me, bro. This shit blew my mind. He's so like, that's nah. a... That's a like the emotional motivators, like when you're right. really, and that's that's one of the things that made me so strong in prison is because you're so emotional, you're so tapped in, and you're visualizing something that is past you. So like you would know your limitations as Mike or Wes if you're operating at a low frequency state, but I would always get to such a high frequency and be so filled with emotion that I was able to do stuff people couldn't do. Right. And this is simply from the fact of having a vision of what can be and the emotions attached to that vision could make you so much different in that moment. And I always teach my people that construction of the vision and adherence to it is coming straight from above. So you're reporting above, you're reporting above to this path and this purpose and the creation of this man that has to fulfill this task no matter what. Right. And I mean, so 10 years in the penitentiary, never missed a day working out, never missed anything. And still, yeah. when I got out, I never missed anything since I got out. And the, it was because I've given myself fully to this path. And then people got to see that, man, this has to be something bigger. And it was, it was just pure alignment, like thoughts, actions, and energy aligned with a vision that is singular to you. And I like to say, like talent hits a target nobody else can hit, but genius hits a target nobody else can see. Mm -hmm. And your vision is your genius. Mm -hmm. And that's why, like, look what you've put together here. Like Ambrosia Collective, all this, all the people you've changed and everything. Mm -hmm. You've been thinking about this for so long and then becoming the facilitator of it by truly living it. And that's what I've done on, on my side of everything. And it's just what stops people from doing that is selfishness to me. So I just know that we can reach more people by having them get be more emotionally inclined to the work that has to be done to create a man that's impactful. People got to understand this one thing, how powerful the mind is, right? Too powerful. It, it's so powerful. First of all, our conscious brain, our conscious mind is never not working. It's operating this magnificent bodies that we all have, right? Like you get cut, it heals itself. You know what I'm saying? 
You go to sleep, I'm going to keep breathing for you and keep pumping oxygen and air through your body. And then we got the whole other side of the subconscious mind, right? And that's where the coding goes in, you know? And you can program people. I, I got to, you know, I work on it with my son to this day, like, because he's heavy into the weights now. And I be trying to, like, notch it up. And he like, I can't do that. It's too heavy. I barely did. I said, you have to stop doing that, son. You have to stop telling yourself you can't do things. Oh, yeah. The, you, the limiting belief systems yeah. are, are ingrained in us. Here. Right. And he's young. So I'm trying to get him turned on now that because I'm crazy. Like, I say I could do anything. Yeah, exactly. I lit- and I believe You know it. those people who really believe it. That's yeah. that's the three traits of hyper successful people. Mm-hmm. Like, one, they think they're better than everyone else. Good. Yeah. I hope everybody thinks their life is Shit. the best and they're better Shit. than everyone else. Yeah. Two is that they literally are never satisfied. And three is that they have impulse control. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these are the three traits of a hyper successful person. And I always tell people, no, you're supposed to think your life is the greatest life ever lived. Anything other than that is ungrateful. So you're not going to be in that state of like, of being tapped in and and understanding everything coming from above. That's greater than what you know, personally at your limit, the limitations of Wes and Mike Mm -hmm. are just so fucking profound when you elevate above all the answers come. So like in my morning process, this is where I find everything. I can't, if I went too much through the day, I would be too impacted by bills, world, life, and all these things to where my content wouldn't construct the same. I have to make my videos directly after a morning process where I get to a high frequency, and then I just have to just push that energy to everybody. And the message is, I like to say that when you're, when you're aligned, you're an antenna. You're an antenna, and, and you're there, at that point, you just become a fucking a vessel that is ready for change down here so you'll you'll be able to download everything coming from above and people just don't know how to get aligned or tapped in and that's really what i teach people the most because it's hidden in the stupidest shit Mm -hmm. like people think detachment is not owning anything but detachment is not letting anything own you so -hmm. people try to detach from shit and like get rid of their cars all their shit the only things that will cause you to actually sacrifice or detach from Anything that would keep you from your conscious state? Because people always, how do you get to that place in the morning, Wes? I said, there's no distance to travel. So why would I have to do anything? And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, well, let me tell you this. I get up at 2.45, I work out at 4, and I do all these things. They're like, well, why do you get up at 2.45? Like, what do you get from it? And, I, and I'm like, and they're like, why do you go to the gym at 4 a.m.? What do you get from it? It's what I get rid of, motherfucker. Mm-hmm. I get rid of all those underlying negative beliefs those low frequency emotions. And so I can get to where we naturally are. We're, we're naturally conscious, highly elevated, high frequency beings, but all the stupid fucking shit we've learned from lesser motherfuckers is what's brought us to that level. So being around people like Mike who say, and Mike just says, fuck it, I can do anything. Those are the motherfuckers you got to get around the people who don't have limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. I want to know more about your process, your morning process, because Listen, I think the mornings are so important. It's so fucking, oh, dude. Let's hear about yours. My morning process, I wake up at 2.45. The first thing I tell myself is it's not about you. It's not about you. Mm. I envision myself well above the planet. I see like lights, like like these little dots on your wall. And these are all people that are in the collective space, the collective consciousness that I'm speaking to. And I'm telling them I'm up. I'm ready to serve you today. And here we are, you know. And it's not about you. It's nothing about West. There's no selfish self-talk. I'm tired. There's no, there's no self-indulgent behaviors, nothing. Everything is about servitude and how I can best serve everyone today. And then I go in. This, this is all about self-transcendence. So that 2.45 a.m. work wake up is for everybody else. And then I go into my workout. This is self-transcendence as well. I go to the workout just to get to the heightened frequency and a, a positive mental attitude so that I can bring the best me to everybody else. Most people go work out to get swole. That's a byproduct of showing up to, cr- to cultivate the best energy possible. If you show up for how you feel and cultivating the best energy possible, then res- you can't be results driven. And the man who takes more pride in the steps it takes to get the result than the result itself, he can't be stopped. Mm-hmm. So I take more pride in the steps and the feeling. In prison, you only had the fucking feeling. You only had the feeling. There was no mirrors. There was no fucking pool party. We got on Instagram for a one flick real quick and then checked messages later. But I mean, you had to just show up for the fucking feeling to get rid of all that negativity inside. So the byproduct was a jacked motherfucker. Mm -hmm. So everything was a byproduct of something internal. All external 
everything we built externally was a byproduct of this beautiful internal state we were cultivating. Mm -hmm. So then after the workout, I go straight into like a YouTube video. I go shoot my YouTube video when I'm at the height and state of frequency. And, um, I don't care about me. Like I'm going to get the fucking video out. I don't give a fuck if I don't even have a topic. I'm sitting the shit down and I owe everybody my word. Mm -hmm. So the cornerstone of my process is creation of the man I always needed my whole life. So the man I always needed my whole life was someone who would keep their word no matter fucking what. Mm -hmm. And that's what I do to my followers and my people and everybody I work with is no matter what, I'm sticking to these things I told you I'd stick to mm -hmm. so that when you're, when you're at your low point or when anything's happening, you can count on me. Bro, it's so much wisdom that we have in us already. We have all of the wisdom there is to know. However, we need to continually educe it and bring it out of us. The Greeks came, you know, they used a word called educe, which is the root of education. And educe means to bring out what's already within. We're not learning. We're just remembering. We're, we're remembering. We're extracting. Tapping in, you know. And using it, yeah. right? And articulating it. There's there's something that, I, that I'm doing that's, now. That's what I always say is to, like, people are like, um, they quote themselves. And I'm like, I never quote myself. And I'm like, because it's not coming from me. It's coming mm -hmm. from above, you know. It's coming yeah. from a centralized source. People will quote you and everything, but I mean, you're the packager of what's coming from above this download, but it's not nothing new being said. The only thing new, there's nothing is new except arrangement. So you arrange that, but that has existed yeah. since this is floating around and this is what infin yeah. infinite intelligence is. Yeah. And by me and you teaching people to get to their higher frequency, this heightened rate of vibration, we can teach them to tap into their genius in any said fucking area. And this is what I know you're all about. I've had the chills the whole fucking show, but it's just, it's such a, a refreshing feeling that this stuff that I, I didn't read that many books. I kind of just stayed in a state of like conscious alignment for so long. You're an antenna. It just fucks yeah. so good. The body's an yeah. antenna, the mind Not when you're aligned, sure. so good. Now think about this, bro. So that that collective consciousness, that source, right? It source just, knowledge. We're just in it. Hear me out. So the law of thermodynamics states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. If you do the knowledge on the planet Earth and its weight and tonnage, it never changes, regardless of how many people are born, die, cars built, etc. Right? Uh, so energy is never created or destroyed. So that means everything's already always been here and will always be here. And that's beyond our perception. We can't understand forever. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's interesting to think about. Our parents, they met, they, they used energy, energy being food, to, to fuel their bodies. Uh, I, I explain to people how food is just a source of energy, like gas is to a car, right? You use up the energy, you need more. So we consume energy from the earth. Oxygen we get from the plants, we give them back carbon dioxide, eat the plants, eat the meat, the, the animals, you know what I'm saying? And these things don't go away. We chew them, they go down our epiglottis, it's partitioned through our body, through our nutrients. We sweat it out, piss it out, shit it out, whatever, right? Some of it stays, turns the muscle, whatever. It changes form constantly, right? And we die. We die, right? We change forms. We don't go away. We're still here. We become nutrients for the earth, for the soil, right? Just like we've used the earth, the earth used us because we are the earth. And the earth is of this universe, right? The earth is like a cell. It's like a molecule, you know what I'm saying? In this infinite universe that we're in, this space that we're in. When you look at a nebula, a crab nebula in space, <laughs> and you look at an eyeball, the fucking same, a galaxy or neurons, the same, you know what I'm saying? You just have a micro and you have a macro, but the comp it, it's identical. Even the life of a sun, a star, is like a human. You know what I'm saying? They start out small and weak and dim. They oh, grow big, every, strong. Every, everything has you know its saying? life cycle like that. I love that exactly, you brought up that exactly. life cycle. Then it gets, as it gets older, it gets smaller but more dense. You know what I'm saying? Like an old person dense with 100%. wisdom. 100%. You know what I mean? Strong, solid. That's, that's what I talk about with, say, fitness. Right. Everything starts off immature. When you first right. start fitness, you're like, I just want fucking abs. I want to be yeah, ripped. Yeah. I want to be jacked. That's all I want. Yeah. By the time you're 15 years in, you're like, mm -hmm. 
I show up t- for a full, a whole different reason. Right. I mean, this is it, there's a maturation phase to where 15 years in, you're showing up for how you feel, right. how you affect others. Mm-hmm. And you're not really changing year after year, but like the density, like you're talking about, yeah. and that's relationships too. Your first yeah. relationship, yeah. your first relationship, you just wanted something from her. You wanted a kiss mm-hmm. or something, your little kid. Mm-hmm. And then once you get older, you're like, I want to give my soul to you. And right. this is a maturation phase of the lifespan of relationships and fitness. And then even finances. Mm-hmm. Your first fucking check. Your first fucking check. You just want to buy something for yourself. It was really immature. But then when you start to evolve, it's like, oh, dude, I'm, I'm thinking about people. There's generational wealth. I'm right. going bigger. Just like the life of the sun, like you're saying, or the star. Um, we, everything has the same maturation phase and, and goes through the same drive. So people have to realize... You may be at that superficial phase and you're not wrong. You're just a beginner and it's okay to be a beginner again. Right. And you and you don't try to skip stages of enlightenment. Mm-hmm. I hate when motherfuckers do that. Like they're at a, a massively far stage of enlightenment and they're telling people not to want certain things or be certain things yeah. to where they're missing the whole point of right. getting it, attaining it yeah. and realizing you don't really need it. Correct. So it's fucked. But a lot of a lot of it I observe, man, and yeah. I, you know I think I got a pretty strong engine up here, and some people are just not even confident to have nice things. Oh, dude, I, I they, love that even, shit. I'm like, you they, couldn't even pull up in the rolls. Well, that shit exactly. would break you. you. You feel silly. You feel stupid. Even if you have the money, they just not confident mm-hmm. wearing a bust down or whatever. You know what I'm saying? They got yeah, learn it's, to pull up. You know, right? So it's like that's fine. Like don't you can judge me all you want. I'm good in my skin. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to wear a bust down every day. How See, about I always tell, I always say the dude who doesn't floss mm. has the biggest ego. Mm. This dude does, this dude is the worst dude. This dude is less humble than anybody. He doesn't want to give you his time. He doesn't want you to know he has money. Uh, he doesn't want to share his path or uh, what he's done to get where he's at with you. He wants nothing to do with you. If, if he knew that you knew he had money, he'd probably want you as far away from him as possible. Right. But people like me and you, we fly the flag, yeah. we pull up in the rolls, we got the fucking watch on, we got the shit. We're this offering to people, and right. we're like, hey, come here, I'll teach you. Hey, come here, I'll teach you. How is that not the more humble guy? And we're proper antennas. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Like, 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 that's, that's how would the they thing know? Is like, how would they know to, how would the universe We're working know? on the old us. We're working yeah. on the old us. Like right. the superficial dude mm. who wanted all the stuff as a gangbanger, as a drug dealer, as a motherfucker. Right. But now we're, we're flying that. Mm. We're that antenna for those people. They're like, I want that life. And we're like, hey, there's a different way. There's right. a different way. Come here. 100%. And it's so, I love having conversation with somebody and catch them completely off guard. Because I know the they look at you, they look at me, and they're thinking one thing. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I flip them. Oh, man, it's the best. It's the greatest. So speaking of being antennas. That's, and- what, that's what people always do, though. They'll be like, hey, I'll pull up in the back. What do you do? I said, it's what I don't do, motherfucker. Right, right, and they're like, like what the <laughs> fuck does that even mean? I'm like, I don't do that shit. I don't do that shit. Right, I ain't doing that. Right, right. Like, my life is more deductive. Mm-hmm. Everything's been deductive for right. me. The, the systems and blueprints are simple. Mm-hmm. Once you get all the desires and all the vices and all the bullshit out the way, mm-hmm. you'll see how easily you can navigate any of your goals. I've been doing a weekly 24-hour fast every Wednesday and with cert- very specific intentions. My intentions is to be able to communicate better, right? So good. now that sounds very basic, but it is. But when I say communicate, um, I'm talking about really communicating. So words and language, energy is, exchange, it seems to be an inferior form of articulation of what's on the soul and on the mind, right? Because I've been in situations where I'm trying to explain something and it's not what I feel is not coming out of my mouth, and I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to say it, right? So it's like. I was like, yo, it's got to be a better way. And when you think about kids before they can speak, before they know language, they can communicate. You know what I mean? They're thinking, they're dreaming, they're figuring things out without words, without language, right? Um, I, I did two IQ tests. The most recent one, I, I was like, the little light bulb. I'm like, wait a minute. This one section is shapes, right? And they all look similar. You got you to gotta determine if each set is the same, but they're oriented in different positions, right? There's no language helping me figure this out. You know what I'm saying? No words, right? So I started just really thinking about that. So I was like, I need to be, I, I desire to be a better communicator. If it's without words, with words, whatever, and also to be able to receive information better too, because- That second part. Yeah, because like people, I'm gonna tell you a lie right now. That's not even a lie. 
And when I said, the reason I say it's not a lie is because it's not being told with the intent to deceive you. The reason I say it is a lie because it's not an accurate depiction of what I'm trying to communicate. That paradox right there tells me everything I need to know that I need to dig deeper to be able to communicate better and receive information better because I know that other people are lying to me with no deception in mind. They just have no way to perfectly articulate what's on their heart and their minds. So that's something that I, I've been working on. And, you know, it's it's been coming slowly. You know what I'm saying? Well, the but fasting I, is a gateway. Like the, the food is a gateway. Is, yeah. I stay in a caloric deficit year round. Mm -hmm. and people are like, well, how does that work for building muscle? I'm like, in prison, you're in a caloric deficit. I just whip my own fucking ass. I don't give yeah. a shit. I, I ain't that worried about it, but... I eat once a day. Yeah, I, yeah. always built always built muscle. Yeah. I, I really eat just... Um, I don't even like to tell people how I eat because then they'll try to eat that way and it's yeah. they shouldn't eat the may fucking way work. I eat. Yeah, yeah don't eat the right. fucking way I eat. Right. But um, it basically staying in such a caloric deficit to where this is where consciousness really evolves. It's because, like, in prison, you'll start to... If you don't put the food in the way, the hunger, you'll go to the next thing. So if you just have that immediate need not met, you're like, I'm hungry. Okay, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. But then if you don't tell yourself you're hungry, you're like, no, this is what fat loss feels like. And then you can tell yourself even more. No, no, this makes me more conscious. Now, these are like symbiotic systems that you can create in your mind that you're like, okay, when I'm in a fasted state, I'm way more conscious. I'm way quicker. I'm way. Is it true or not? I mean, it's your belief in it. So like most people could like say if you have anxiety squeeze this ball like a bunch of times and if you right. did that enough it would work right. so i create symbiotic systems in my mind that are congruent to two outcomes i want so if i tell myself when i'm in a caloric deficit i'm way quicker i'm this i'm that i'm that it doesn't necessarily have to be scientifically true if i believe in it and i've practiced it enough it will become what it needs to become but i have something for you so i've been eating one meal a day for the past 2018 um, before that, I was eating a lot, and I was big as fuck, right? But before that, I used to eat one meal a day, right? That's part of my life, like, you know what I'm saying? Diff different intentions to the different right, times, yeah. Right, exactly. So this go around 2018, when I started back eating one meal a day, um, I want to talk to my community about it, but I want to see if my notions are in, in aligned with science. And lo and behold, they are. They so, always are. They, they are. So... My my mind, like anecdotally, I'm like, look, when I'm hungry, like when I was boxing, I could not eat on a day of a fight. I just don't want to because I feel like when I eat, I'm comfortable. You know what I'm saying? And I need to feel hungry. I need to feel yeah, that discomfort. I, I need to feel violent and dangerous. You know what I'm saying? You don't feel like that with a fat man. When you're man. hungry, you fight. Exactly. So, and I'm, so I'm reading about this shit and it said that, you know, our ancestors, you got to think, our version of human, what we know as a human. Comfortable, soft, has, way too. Well, well, we've been on this planet 200,000 years, right? There's been millions of years of different types of human species, but Homo sapiens sapiens, 200,000 years, give or take. Now, we've been kind of civilized for about 10,000 years. We had agriculture even less than that. And then this abundance of food and shit like that now is, the, is so new, right? 50, 60, not even 100 years, right? So... We're designed to operate on an empty stomach because back in the day, we ate a couple times That's a week. That's how I always do the best. A couple times a week. And when we had to go hunt, it's because we're hungry. You know what I'm saying? We have a, this is what I read, a heightened sense of alertness, awareness, memories better, all of that shit. And you got to think, we had to, we had to track food. Always. For miles. Figure out how to fucking corner them, capture them, carry it back to our villages and shit, all on an empty stomach. You know what I'm saying? So... People ask me the same thing. Now, granted, I did lose a good amount of weight when I went back to one meal a day, but I came down to about, I fluctuated from 115 to one to, I'm sorry, 215 to 220. And I don't budge, you know what I'm saying? So our protein synthesis is, is, is greater when we eat less, when we're on a caloric de deficit. So that means the food that you eat, when you don't eat much, it goes directly to where it needs to go. It's actually doing more. It's, it's doing more. There's no excess. Yeah, you know I, I always eat in that manner. And I've even read that gluconate clogs up the pineal gland. Mm. So, I mean, it, like that, that's that third eye. And and gives you uh, diabetes. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I, I really just, 
when you're suffering, you're so much more conscious. So I, I, I self inflict adversity to really bring out that heightened state of awareness and consciousness. Same Same thing you're saying. It's it's beautiful. And you, I always tell people like, look, you know, I like to enjoy myself, but I have limits because too much fun and good times create weak men. That's why I always say purpose over pleasure. 100%. 100%, 100%. People are like, why do you have your cars? And I'm like, dude, you got to have something. Like, men like yeah. your fucking cars. But yeah. I, I really engage fully in purpose. I, I I feel weird if I'm not purpose-driven. I just feel like I'm serving myself. And it doesn't, there's there's actually... It's meaningless. It's meaningless. Yeah. It's, it's empty. It's meaningless because our level of consciousness is kind of capped by the, a thing called death, a disease called death, Right. So for me, I can speak on my behalf, I'm very motivated by the fact that I'm going to quote unquote die, right? Change forms. So with that being said, my intentions is for you to have a, a, a dope experience with me for your last experience with me. And for anybody that I interact with to have pleasant thoughts of me for when I'm gone, because I could die today or tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? We don't know when it's coming. So I try to live my life predicated on the fact that I'm going to die. So I know people are going to be sad for a minute and then forget about me. You know what I'm saying? But I want to, like, dig my my roots as deep as possible so I could be remembered for as long as possible. And how would I be remembered? By setting up my children in, in a perfect way, not just with things, but with wisdom, with 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 tactics that's... that. Like I, I, I reference like boy my right father. There said, like your boy right there said, he exactly. said, we're not going to give him everything we never had. We're going to teach him everything we never knew. Exactly. I reference my father all the time. I, I would love for my son to be doing that for me, about me. You know what I'm saying? So, Did you, you write a book yet? I've been working on something. Write a book, dog. Yeah, I've been your shit, well, your shit be gold. I I'm just dropped really mine. Good. I got an international bestseller. It's called Non Negotiable 10 Years Incarcerated, Creating the Unbreakable Mindset. Mm. But I mean, the book is the gateway because people could just. They could feel it. One that tangible book in their hands. Right, you know? right. Nah, and yeah. the thing is, is everything that was an instrument that we used, mm-hmm. we have to give back. And you've read so many books. We we need a Mike Rashid book. It's going to be fire. Well, I, have a, I have a good start already. You know I bet, saying? dude. You, just your I've mind already, is a good yeah, start. You're, already, you're ready to go. I've already been working on it. Um, it's funny because I What had would a, you call it? I don't know. I don't know. So far, the working title or the manuscript is called Mental Jewels. Right? That'd be dope. Because I have a, a bunch of series of videos called Mental Jewels of just wisdom and guidance and shit like that. But uh, I really don't know yet. Because here's the thing. I think a lot and sometimes I overly think things. And I might come up with a title that people are like, what the fuck does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, mine just fell together. I was like, that was non-negotiable, yeah. you know. Yeah. And then the subtitle, 10 Years Creating the Unbreakable Mindset. Mm-hmm. And then the, then the fucking cover came together. The cover is a picture I took in prison in black and white. Damn. And I used that as the picture of the cover. The cops at the time even said, take your social media down or you ain't getting out. I said, what the fuck makes you think? Oh, no, take your social media down or you ain't going home. Well, I am home, motherfucker. Who right. are you talking to? Yeah. And yeah. they're like, I'm like, uh, they're, the dude's like, I follow you. I see that you post all the time. I said, you ain't following me, dog. Right. And it's just like they would give people 115s for having uh, Facebook and Instagram. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, they ended up telling people, give, calling people in, giving them 90-day write-ups and 90 days off your good time. And at that time, I barely even had any good time left. So I said, fucking take it. I don't give a shit. Right. And that's one thing. You're not ready to get out of prison till you don't need to get out of prison. You ain't ready to have that money till you really don't need it. You ain't ready to have that physique till it really wouldn't change you that much. And mm-hmm. most people are trying to run to their goals and dreams. And it's like, you ain't mature enough yet. It's going to fuck you over. If I gave most of these motherfuckers a million bucks, they'd be in Bali kicking their feet up. They wouldn't even fucking work the next day. Mm-hmm. I mean, me and you would just... We got them three, man. We got yeah. that. We got that. That that number two, which is never satisfied. Right. And the thing is, you're more never satisfied on being valuable to others. You know, that that part. You know, that's you know, uh, you know when I when I sit back and think about my ecosystem, my little solar system, my family, my friends, my associates, and my little world. I'm like, damn. I kind of do a lot for a lot of people, or people are able to, you know, drink from my fountain in, in an abundance. You know, what cup I'm overfloweth. Exactly, and I love that because I'm here for them. Listen, this is what I tell my friends. This is some real shit. I and I mean this, bro. I look forward to the day to give a to, you know, give a great sacrifice for somebody I love. I don't give a fuck if it's a kidney, or whatever. 
if somebody, I would be so hurt if somebody needed something that big and didn't come to me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm here for that, bro. I don't know why I'm designed like that, but I'm here for that. You know, uh, you know, it's not like I've done bad things in the past, but I feel like I feel like I've walked my walk. You know what I'm nah, saying? You, you've you've so, extinguished a lot of that old karma, dude. It's yeah, done. You, yeah. You've you've exercised it. It's one hundred percent because karma comes right back at you. Especially when you're conscious, when you know better, is worse. And oh, it's worse. You're, you're you're attuned to it. Yeah, you, you, yeah. you feel it right away. For sure. Instant. For sure. So, and the 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 impediments that I've inflicted upon myself by my my decisions were things of the heart. You know what I'm saying? And of the mind, because that's physical pain is nothing to me. You know nothing. what I'm saying? So it's those, right. So those things really. Um, were you know I've I've dealt my punishment back to myself, but I use my punishment to make me stronger. You know what I'm saying? I I tell every everybody look, I make everything my bitch. You know what I'm saying? Nothing works me. You know what I mean? And it, it started when I was young, so I started boxing at a young age, and sometimes I go I have a tournament in another state, so I have to go like Dolo, and I be there for like four or five days, and I always was like in shape, right? Skinny as fuck, but broad shoulders, you know, cut. So I just looked bigger, but I wasn't. So these other coaches were fucking, I knew they were trying to break me. I'm looking at everybody else. They're not making them do what they're making me do. You know what I'm saying? And in my head, it's like, I'm not, I see what they're trying to do. I'm not going to quit. The only way I don't complete this is, is if I pass out. Because then they're telling my dad I, I fucking quit. You know what I'm saying? And it's never happened. Never passed out. And that mentality is still in me to this day. To this day. Yeah, it's life or death with everything. Yeah. That's, that's why I tell motherfuckers when I came out, fuck a plan B. I didn't have one. Yeah. And I was I was gonna just I was just gonna give back mm -hmm. everything that right. worked for me. And that's mm -hmm. life's a mirror. Everybody's trying to fucking everyone's trying to fit other people's mo it's whatever worked for you will work for motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. The only thing that separates us is habits. Right. So if you can get people to have the correct habits that are aligned with the outcome they want, it's all very simple. Everybody overcomplicates shit so fucking much it it trips me out. Like they I I think they overcomplicate shit to give themselves a way out. If they don't understand it, they don't have to fucking do it. Right. Yeah, I don't like that. People I'm on the keep it simple, stupid. Keep uh, it simple as a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Because like even in fitness, like I remember years ago when I was just a trainer and I would have colleagues that, you know, doing what I did and they would be, you know, there's one guy in particular I'm thinking about who now just, I don't know what he's doing, regular nine to five, but this motherfucker would be talking to people in these medical and scientific terms. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? What is that? He would explain the, the hamstring, like the femoris bicep. I'm like, what? You mean the back of the leg, motherfucker? Like the bicep femoris. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck. So yeah, I'm they, like, they, 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 that's how you elevate yourself for no fucking reason. You know? Well, they have a tactic of thinking that confusing these people and keeping them insecure about their knowledge of these, these uh, or understanding of the body, would keep them on the tip. Exactly. That's and I'm bullshit. like, bro, don't that, do that's, that. That's placating. That's Teach facetious. Them. Yeah. I taught my people in layman's terms everything, right? And as a result. They didn't need me no more, but they stayed with me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? I used exactly. to be like, why do you come back? You know what I'm saying? But people gotta understand that, like when you really, when you are really tapped into giving value to people. I'm gonna give you an example. Yesterday I went to a gym in LA. It was dope. It was called uh, I think John Reed. It was just a cool ass gym. I've been hearing about it, so I finally went and checked it out. So um, a few people uh, recognized me, came up, take pictures, talk, all of that shit, right? That's always nice, man. It's Coming cool. from where we I love come it, from bro. when people I come love up. It. I love it. Love it. It doesn't bother me at all. So one of the cats, we were talking and shit like that, and he said he just moved out here from Philly. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, what you come out here for? What do you do? And he was like, oh, I'm a trainer. I said, okay, that's what's up. I said, you train here? He said, yeah. I said, you work for the gym or independent? He said, no, I'm independent. I got the most clients of everybody in here. Oh, that's what's up. How much they charge here? He was like, I mean, I just do it. I was like, uh, so you stealing, right? He said, I mean, they don't really say shit. I said, but do they allow people to train under the table? He says, now nah, you got to work for them or you have to, I think you have to, they might have an independent setup. You know what I'm saying? I said, bro, you shouldn't do that. Anything that you care about for real, right? And that's your passion. You got to be pure at it, bro. Don't shit like that. Like, and he tried to give me the, yeah, but the manager, he know, he kind of know. I'm like, bro, whatever. Oh, he said, they don't make nobody else, everybody else doing it too. I said, fuck them. That has nothing to do with you. You know what I'm saying? Bro, be pure at your passion, at your craft. 
I live by that. That's how I was. That's why I'm where I am now. You know, it started with personal training. But I fucking I was all in with my people. You know what I'm saying? It's unconditional. You were your yeah. character was unwavering. Exactly. It has to be like that, you know. So he uh he came back to me like later on before I left. He's like, man, you right, you right. I said, you know what's right or wrong. So I said, I ain't telling you what to do, but you know if what you're doing is right or wrong. Well, okay. a lot of people don't realize that the conscience is is the infallible guide. Mm -hmm. Conscience is the authentic voice of God. It's the it's the voice of reason. And I tell people to live in a conscience congruent manner, and this will guide them through life. It's all you really need to know. Step in the mirror and listen to what your conscience is telling you. Is it telling you to drop the drink? Is it telling you to drop those pounds? Is it telling you to drop that negativity? What is it telling you? It's all real simple shit it's telling you. But then something like that at that workplace, you know he's been told by his conscience a million times it's incorrect. Just like what my content on YouTube, the Mental Jewels videos, they get the least burned. I saw the last one said like God frequency. I'm like, oh, yeah. what? That's fucking dope. Yeah, that was uh, an event I did last week, um, just a meetup, um, and also because for my online community, I haven't done anything public yet. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to start doing that. So I had a meetup. Um, we did a. I had a few of my friends on stage. We did a Q and A, talked to people, food, drinks, whatever, and then we also had a sound bath, sound bath healing and meditation. You know, because I am a I'm a bridge to that gaps people towards spirituality. Hundred percent, you're you know the guide. Mean? Yeah, so a lot of people they're kind of turned off by all of these things because it's coming from a hippie. You know what I'm saying? But it's, I am a hippie. You got it. You got it. I'm bro. a hippie, but I'm fly as fuck, yeah. and See, I that, and I, I'm like them. That's so, the thing. A lot of them yeah. come for fitness. Right. They come for nutrition, or they come for like. The gear, the style, the yeah. fucking swag, but mm. then you, you're their spiritual guide. I love right. that. Right. That's that's we, one thing that most people don't see yeah. until they get into the program. They're like, right. holy shit, Mike, you changed my life. Yeah, for sure, bro. And, you know, I ha I, I've always heard clips of your content, right? Um, but one day I was like, let me, let me just get on the YouTube shit and sit with some of this shit, right? And first I was listening to the prison stories, you know what I'm saying? And, um... But then I'm hearing, like, I'm hearing real consciousness. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I got, I fuck with this guy right here. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of things that I like surface level. A lot of people. I don't care how crazy, over the top, silly, whatever. Something about them. I like authentic and real people. You know what I'm saying? But then some people like yourself or like Chris, Chris Gethin we were talking about earlier. There's a few other people that I know, 19 Keys, who we, we align spiritually. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, that's my spiritual brother right there. You know what I'm Hell saying? Yeah. And I'm very like appreciative of coming into the space with people like that. And I feel like I oh it happens in here a lot. In this room a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I rarely get I rarely get those duds. You know the, what I'm saying? The cool the cool thing is is the law of attraction used by the social space is that like what you truly validate yourself with in your heart is what others want from you. Mm -hmm. So people like us, we don't we don't really we're successful. We got to we're at a different level. We don't need anything from anyone so then when you see someone has a certain level of understanding or characteristics a character a deeper level of consciousness now they're validating that in their heart then it makes a copacetic relationship because the person's like willing to give that they want to teach that and that's what the other person wants from when on the other end when people do validate themselves with just their money or their financial status they fuck up all their relationships because they're drawing people in because they're validating themselves and people want what you validate yourself with. Mm -hmm. Like, you're doing that. Right. So if they're like, I got snakes around me because I got fucking money. It's like, you did that, motherfucker. You validated yourself with it's the money, yeah. not the internal assets it's that got you. it. Right. You know? And why are these types of people around you? You know, listen, I was having a conversation the other day. Like, uh, somebody like, do girls be trying to use you? And I'm like, nah. I, I guess I don't put off that type of energy. I'm not a trick. You know what I'm saying? And I never... Like, if a woman is into me, she's into this, you know what I'm saying? And it's what you validate yourself yeah, with is what they're bro. drawn to. Yeah, so I'm not that guy. I'm not promising taking anybody shopping. I actually had that happen one time, but it was so fascinating. I'm like, wow, this is really happening. I flew a girl out from out the country and I needed to pick up a shirt for dinner that night. So we go to the mall and you know, South Coast Plaza got the nicest of the nicest shit. Ooh, 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 ooh. This motherfucker had the nerves to say to me, so when are you gonna take, when are you gonna spoil me? I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> and I love these awkward conversations. I love it. Uh, what do you mean? 
you know, like take me shopping. I said, I'm not, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, I'm not. I don't do that. I said, I don't know, I hope I didn't put out the wrong uh, persona or, or, or whatever, but I don't do that. Like, I'm not that guy. I got money, yeah, but I would never use money to get a woman. I've never had to do that, and I never will, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I told her, like, this was a huge red flag, so I'm not even comfortable hanging out with you no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm that cold with it, bro. Yeah. And she had to trip pay for it. That's all good. You you can do your thing. You know what I'm saying? I'm not interested no more. You know what I'm saying? I don't have that kind of energy or even, like, dudes that just... Yeah, it's don't even entertain me. that shit. I don't... None, none of that shit. So anybody people see me with is solid. Solid people. They like me. You know what I'm saying? You ain't gonna see me with... Nobody got to pull my coattail like, bro, you know so-and-so is, is da, 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 da. It's not happening, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody around me is solid, you know what I mean? And I just, I, I, I can, I used to be full of shit, so I could see when people are full of shit. Oh, 100%. I see when, it all. When you're you fully saying? aligned, you can call, you yeah. can detect a lie very well. 100%. And you know, someone's character. I mean, yeah, it's just, the, the point is, is uh, like, where do we stop guiding them? When they when they don't want to fucking when they don't want to step up when they're when they're not realizing that their low level of consciousness and their poor choices are hindering those around them, I really, I'm real sacrificial in the sense that I'll I'll keep working with people to the bitter end, you know. Right, right. I'm like that to an extent, and there's been cert, certain relationships. Uh, one in particular I'm thinking of, where a person you know came into the circle, um, you know, people have their little problems and shit, and it should be annoying. And we try to work through it, and I was really trying to guide this person, and this person, you know, he bit the hand that, that fed him. You know what I'm saying? And I knew it was because there was a woman present. We was on a phone call, right? And I knew it. I can tell. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a man. I was like, what? I said, okay, all right, man. You don't have a job. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, of course, reality kicked in quick call back, we hopped on the phone. And this person, I love him. He know what I'm talking about. I love this guy to death. He's my, my, my little brother, right? So, and he's back in the circle. But <laughs> this little period, he had to get a lashing, bro, because it's like, you know, he called me crying. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I just, uh, I said, bro, don't ever, saying you a man is the stupidest shit in the world. Being a man is getting bringing home the bag, making sure your job is secure, motherfucker. Like, not telling me you're a man. I'm yeah, you got fuck. fucking results. Exactly. And I said, you know, um, but his he he had deep-rooted problems at that time because he had a woman that was just bringing him down. Like, he was in love with a woman that, like, I'm like, when I seen her, I'm like, really? You know what I'm saying? But some women are very fucking powerful, bro. And the right woman slash the wrong woman will drag you down. Well, they say you know we, uh, we attract relationships aligned with the level of healing we need. That part, that part. That's so it's good and bad. Right. So both of them, uh, a bad relationship is beneficial and a good relationship is, but um, they're all pulling weaknesses from you. Right. So she's going to test you in ways that you couldn't take mm -hmm. so that she could pull that from you and right. test you. You got to be the calm and the storm in this. And I've, I've been massively tested in, in mm -hmm. many ways in, in relationships. And um, I just see every time when it was something that I was fearful of that mm. I don't think I could take, mm. it made me that much fucking stronger. So. Mm. I, I do a lot of dealing with a lot of young men and they're dealing with their problems with women and it's not a third and it's like, bro, like so many of y'all do not have any business dealing with women right now. You know what I'm saying? Because women, like a man's dominion is of the earth. You know what I'm saying? A woman's dominion is of over her children, right? If a man cannot exercise dominion properly, right, the woman will not respect him. You know what I'm saying? And if the woman don't respect that man, that man is her child. She runs. That, him. That's the one. That's the relationships. There's there's a yeah. father daughter. There's brother sister. And there's mother son, and I see too many of the mother son ones nowadays. Right. Know? Soft so, motherfuckers who can't hack it. You know. You what'd you just say? Soft motherfuckers who can't pull their weight. You know? That's what a motherfucker is. Yeah. It's a man whose woman has dominion over him. He's fucking a mother. You know Damn. what I'm saying? His mother. That's a mother. You never say in those, those slang mother those mother son relationships, people like that, they're they're always like, cause my my relationship is pretty, pretty hectic. But um the thing is is that I'm like, bro, I don't think you understand. Like, your chick puts your fucking pants on. Like you you ain't 
you have to abide by her. Right. You're not fucking leveling up. I'm like, I have a, a father daughter relationship with my mm -hmm. wife. And the mm -hmm. thing is, is that, and she's a Latina and she's hot. So I'm like, you're three. That is your mom. Homeboy ain't the same as a 10. That right. is fucking literally that I'm guiding through life and making right. very uncomfortable right. to level up and right. grow. You right. know, I, I dealt with a situation, man, with my ex. I, I loved her to death and still do, you know, and I'll do anything as for you her. should. And, but she, she's, she's a strong woman, beautiful, fine, strong as fuck. Right. But she, the challenging of me, it's not gonna, it's not a, it's not a thing. That's you know one saying? thing that they're going to hate, mm -hmm. but men show their love by committing and women show their love by submitting mm -hmm. and people ain't going to fucking like that, but right. I don't give a fuck. And here's the thing. Some will submit. Only when it's convenient. Oh yeah, just that's like, that conditional shit. Just you can't like, be conditional. You have to you be unconditional. Be, you can't be conditional. Just like when uh, a, we were talking about character earlier, how you got to activate character when it's tough, unwavering, when, you, when it's uncomfortable. You know what I'm saying? Unwavering. You, I've heard you say that before. Uh, but even with a woman, a strong woman, you know, when it's time to time to submit, time to submit when your emotions are high. I'm telling you something you don't want to hear. And you're getting hot and I'm trying to shut it down. Submit. Stop. Exactly. If she could stop. do that, then it would work. That's real submission. Yeah. It's not submission when we're shopping or we're exactly. out having fun. It's, that's, that's what easy. I call the inconvenience factor. Exactly. When you're truly inconvenienced, that's right. who the fuck you are. Right. Because listen, everybody has problems. No relationship is perfect. We're humans. We're flawed, right? Uh, people hurt each other unintentionally all the time. But let's talk through it. Let's fix it. But if we're, while we're working on that... And if you're getting to a state in which it's becoming unproductive, and I recognize it, I'm like, all right, it's time to stop, baby girl. And if you don't, you got to go. I'm sorry. See, most of, most of them, uh, Carl Jung said um, neurosis is a byproduct of pain avoidance. And neurosis mm. is like mm. mild mental illness, anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorders, all these mild mental illnesses that rule weak ass men and women mm -hmm. so i mean they don't walk into the pain enough they don't live in a state of wanting the pain like we do so they suffer from these fucking inflicted disorders that are just low frequency states mm -hmm. so when i see these people and i teach them to operate moment by moment at a high frequency they'll be impervious to these fucking things they've been labeling right. themselves as right. so i mean but that's why most of the problems are initiated through like neurotic behaviors because mm -hmm. of Pain avoidance. When you have that motherfucker go crush a crazy workout, there's going to be no fucking argument. Mm -hmm. The gym is one of the places people hold the door for everybody. Right. And then these That's motherfuckers, right. they do not realize that they're sitting here in a negative state, not doing what was best for them and wondering why they're feeling like a loser. You chose to take L's all day. Mm -hmm. Your conscience was telling you to get the fuck up earlier. Your conscience was telling you to work out. Your conscience was telling you to eat a certain way. Your conscience was telling you to not drink so much, do not drink at all, not use that dope, not use that shit, not be so negative. And you still didn't abide by it. So how the fuck do you, how do you, how do you suppose you're going to win if you're choosing to take these L's all day? How is it with women in your life? I'm married and I love my wife more than life itself. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll fight through with everything. We've been through a lot of uh, struggles and ups and downs. And, um, you know, I'm just, I'm such a committed man. I don't give a fuck. Like what people call a problem out here is bitch shit to me. Mm -hmm. Like they'd be like, oh my God, that happened. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. You know, yeah. like I just don't, you know, she, I, I'm, she came in like with some vices, some bad behaviors and everything. And recently leveled up to being an entrepreneur oh. and selling her own artwork, mm -hmm. doing her workouts, dropping the vices right. and um, being a more evolved person. Now I'm not stupid. Two years, three years into this holding your breath from that old life. You haven't fully crossed that bridge of enlightenment. Mm -hmm. You're going to have explosions and back steps. Remember I was five years in, I was fully clean and I was mm -hmm. in prison and I was enlightened. I was winning. And then I took a sip of that wine. I started smoking speed and I was off to the races. Right. So I'm never going to believe that someone I'm working with two, three years in, like my wife or anybody isn't going to have those major back steps. Mm -hmm. And I'm just prepared for them. They're right. not. Right. So then the, the shame and the guilt, the low frequency states mm -hmm. cause them to self-sabotage. But that's the thing is I was so flawed. I still am. And I have so many fucking things to work on that. 
I really just don't give up on anyone. I keep pushing through. I want to wrap this up, but I would love for you to come back. Oh, 100%. I wanted us to do an episode. I want to hear the prison stories because those are Yeah, let's go straight into that one next time. Yeah, but uh, before we go, I want... I want to know your, uh, what's your perspective on, or your understanding on God or the concept of God? I, I usually don't use the word, so I just say like consciousness. I, I say God. I say the universe, but I know I'm being guided by a centralized intelligence. That's just all I know. I don't know. Like, I don't like put a, a face being, to like it. A being. Like, yeah, just energy. A being. I mean, I wake up every day and I'm an offering above. I say report above. Don't report below. Don't report to your wife. Don't report to your kids. Don't report to your friends. Don't report to nobody. Report above and just listen to that voice. That's how I constructed the life I have is by just reporting above. Every time Mm -hmm. I served me or someone else down here, something went wrong. So I report above and I act accordingly. Mm -hmm. But every day I, I wake up as an offering. I sit at that table where I have an esteemed chair and I sit with infinite intelligence and I say, I'm here again. And every morning I know he's sitting up there who the energy universe, God, whatever is sitting there. And it's like, is he going to get up again as this offering of a man that he says he is And every fucking day I haven't missed. So that's how I know exponentially you increase your connection to above is to show up on your fucking word and your commitment. Mm, I love that. That's beautiful, bro. Um, but tapping into that guidance, that source, right? Centralized intelligence, that, that centralized source intelligence, knowledge. Intelligence, you know, because um, that's a question I ask myself daily, right? And I'm always observing and trying to learn and, and not talk about what it is to me because I don't know, you know? But the more I listen to, let's say, for instance, I listen to everybody equally, like in terms of like uh, a yogi in India who has profound philosophical insights or a uh, string theorist. You know what I'm saying? I'm listening because sometimes they're saying the same things. They're always saying the same things. You know? And it feels like there's a consciousness of God, right? We, that... The more that we know, that we learn and understand, we start tapping into that consciousness, you know? And, um, you know, I would love for, before I, you know, change forms, to understand God or be fully tapped into the consciousness of God, you know? But even if I don't, I'm going to keep trying and keep listening and keep seeking because it's fascinating to think about. And I had these little sparks of, like, ideas that, come and go sometimes, you know? But I feel like the more uh, I'm fully activated and tapped into my higher self, the more I am being a receptor or an antenna. 100%, walking in alignment with that universal message. Yeah, it's gonna come. It's like that old Bob Proctor video and he's like, they're like, why do you get up so early? He's like, if you're gonna meet who I'm gonna meet, you would too. (laughs) And he's just so crazy about it, Mm -hmm. but that's how I feel. Like my morning process is an initiation process. Like. Every fucking thing that I'm doing is I'm just aligning myself to be that offering to everybody down here to be the living example that I know would deter them from the unneeded pain that they're placing on themselves. Mm -hmm. Right. And people like us are offering tactics in which one can employ a stressful situation to themselves that's not going to harm them but they're going to get the positive benefits out of it. You yeah, know the only saying? way to alleviate suffering is more suffering. More suffering. Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Love it. Yes, sir. Man, I appreciate you coming out, bro. Big Mike, let the, thank let you. The people, one more, I want to ask you this too. You have you have somewhat of a mentorship program or a course? Yeah, or... I have a couple different programs. I yeah. have an elite mindset program where mm-hmm. I work with top individuals constructing their day and everything around what they need to do to get to their higher self Mm -hmm. physically mentally spiritually Mm -hmm. and financially i have a program that's built off of building online coaches and creating the me like basically some of my my mid-level program is training nutrition and mindset and those people are all being cultivated to then be like me one day Mm -hmm. so it's kind of like
Kentucky University. But anyone can get a hold of me on westwatson.com. You should follow me on YouTube, GP Penitentiary Life, and then shoot me a follow also on um, on Instagram at Watson underscore fit. Going to be dropping wisdom on there every fucking day. I never miss. That's one thing I tell people is I never fucking miss. And that's the cornerstone of what everyone's doing wrong with their goals. Choosing to fucking miss due to choosing themselves over their purpose. So it's purpose over pleasure across the fucking board. And um, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys there. And thank you, Mike, for everything. Purpose over pleasure. I love that. It's so good. It's just simple. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Y'all make sure y'all follow my guy. And y'all gonna see him back again soon. We out of here. 